really grateful to Sabrosa and all the friends at Sabrosa for helping make this happen vicariously and directly. I'm going to have some dear friends of mine read um, the artist statement so you all can hear it. And um, there's a few that are available to take. There's some prints as well for sale. Um, and then after they read the artist statement, I'm going to read this book that is appropriate to the pieces called The Other Way to Listen. So, This is the artist thing. Mm. I, Steve, <laughs> <laughs> have always collected interesting artifacts from the world around me. The evolving shape of a fallen leaf, the immaculate lightness of a dead butterfly, the empty sound a bone makes when thrown to the ground. As a child, each of these perfect moments had their place, their feeling, their voice. For me, they were totems of lost memories, a relic from some dreamed-of future past that might have never existed without its proof I held, keepsakes from a journey into the unknown. Though over the years, through social pressure of adolescence, my attentiveness, to the details of the natural world began to fade. It wasn't until I started incorporating these natural wonders into art pieces that I found that voice again. The environmental crisis. Okay. The environmental crisis can be distilled down to a crisis of not knowing how to hear the quiet voices speaking out all around us and respond to their needs. The more we move our lives into a virtual world, the more we risk forgetting how to listen to the world beyond our computers, mobile phones, and social networks. We risk forgetting how to listen to each other, and most importantly, how to listen to ourselves. Where is the sovereignty of our perception amidst so much clamor for it? It is this collective, co-creative perception that thrives in a greater communion of direct experience with the natural world and with each other over the technological obsessions that only serve to exalt the ego and self-centeredness. Bones, feathers, insects, stones, dried flowers, and driftwood all have a voice to share. These works are open-ended. They are designed to play on the meaning, myth, metaphor, and memory to evoke the deeper voices in us all. The ones we left under the rock we hid behind as kids, or in the hollow of a tree that kept us all, that kept all of our secrets. We didn't trust to share with anyone else. These pieces are about the voices we heard so clearly as kids, the voices that have always been there if we are willing to make believe in them again. For they are never gone just hiding in everything around us, waiting for the day we turn the corner once again and say, hello, it's nice to see you again, to the moss on the wall. Thank you. So, now the uh, 